Today we'll be discussing power functions, which is found in section 3.1 of your BJU Press pre-calculus textbooks. So our objectives are just going to be to define and evaluate power functions, and then also look at even and odd functions and how to tell the difference between even and odd functions algebraically. And then we'll also look at graphing power functions and looking at domain and range for those. So what is a power function? A power function is in the form f of x equals c, and that capital C is some constant number times x to the nth power, okay? Where c and n are real numbers, and x is your variable. So the definition of um, power functions is going to include powers that are rational or irrational. So um, before, when we were looking at polynomials, um, they had to be positive integral exponents. But when we're looking at power functions, we can have fractions, we can have um, um, irrational numbers. So it's gonna be a little different than polynomials. Um, however, it's very similar to polynomials, so if you had a really good understanding on polynomials from the previous chapter, you have a great footing on where to begin on power functions. So how are power functions different from polynomial functions? Um, well, they only have one term. So on a polynomial, um, you know, we had a monomial, we had binomials, we had trinomials, and then we have polynomials, right? So it all depended on how many terms they had. Well, in power functions, they're always going to just be one term. They're always going to be in that form c times x to the nth power. So that's only one term. So if you have c times x to the nth power plus something, then you no longer have a power function. You have a polynomial function. And then also polynomial functions um, could not have net um, negative numbers, and it also couldn't have um rational numbers like fractions, it can only have non-negative integers. Well, for power functions, we can include our negative numbers and we can include our fractions. So that's how they differ from polynomials as well. So let's look at an example of a power function. This one we have negative two times x to the fourth power. Let's say we want to evaluate it for f of negative one f of 0, f of 1 half, and f of 3. We also want to look at the degree, the domain, the range, and the graph of this function. Well, to evaluate, remember when we're evaluating um, f of negative 1 is saying let x be negative 1 and tell me what y is or tell me what f of x is. So we will plug in negative 1 for x. So instead of writing negative 2 times x to the fourth, we'll write negative 2 times negative 1 to the fourth. Notice my use of parentheses around that negative 1. So when I put a negative 1 to the fourth power with the parentheses, I get 1. And then negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. So notice how I also didn't multiply negative 2 times negative 1 before I do the fourth power because according to the order of operations, I handle my exponents first before I handle multiplication. So you have to be very careful when you're doing order of operations. So f of 0, 0 to the fourth power is 0, and then negative 2 times 0 is 0. So again, notice how I took care of the exponent first, and then I multiply. That's going to be key to this entire lesson. Then f to the 1 half, 1 half to the fourth power is 1 to the 16th. I'm sorry, 1 over 16th, and then negative 2 times 1 over 16 is negative 2 over 16, which reduces to negative 1 over 8. The last one we want to evaluate is f of 3, so 3 to the 4th power is 81, and then negative 2 times 81 becomes negative 162. All right, so the degree is 4, because that's the power of our um, monomial, and so that's the only degree that we have. 
And then we want to look at domain and range. So the domain is all real numbers. There's no limitations if we're looking left and right. However, on the range, um, we notice that our y values are always going to be less than or equal to zero. We're never going to have a positive y value. It's always going to be less than zero. So we'll say that our range is all the y's less than or equal to zero. And if we're looking at the graph, it looks like this. It is a parabola that's been flipped upside down, which means it does have a line of symmetry across the y-axis. All right, let's look at another example. Let's graph g of x equals x cubed, and we want the domain and range. So if you were to graph it, it looks like this. So notice how um, we have our bottom tail coming in from the bottom left, and then it goes up to the top right. Um, so domain and range, there's no limitations on the x values, and there's no limitations on the y values. They go both directions. An equation of the form f of x equals c times x to the n, so the power functions, they're all going to pass the vertical line test. So you're always going to have a function if you have a power function. And your domain is always going to be all real numbers for a power function. Um, the range is going to be different. Sometimes you'll have all real numbers for your range on a power function, and sometimes you'll have a limitation, such as greater than zero or less than zero. And that's going to depend on if your power function is a parabola. Um, and if you have a parabola, then the range will be limited. So a parabola comes um, is also going to have line symmetry on that y-axis. So let's graph f of x equals negative x to the fourth um, and give the domain and range. So notice the use, well, the non-use of parentheses. So this is actually saying negative times x to the fourth, which means you would do x to the fourth first and then multiply by negative one since it's not included in the set of parentheses. So when we graph it, um, we would want to look at our zeros first. And so our roots end up just being x equals zero, right? Because the, um, if we were trying to figure out negative one times something to the fourth that's equal to zero, the only thing that would work would be zero if we were to solve for, solve for that. And so our roots is x equals zero. Um, we have a degree of four, so we have a power of four, which means that we need four roots. Well, the only root we were able to solve for was x equals 0, which means that it has a multiplicity of 4. And then if we wanted to go ahead and graph it, we would plug in some points, and we would get um, some points. And then if we were to look at our graph, we would notice that it's a parabola, which means that it has line symmetry across the y-axis. So here's those points that we evaluated. Here's our sketch of our graph. And notice how it is a parabola, so it has that line symmetry at the y-axis. Our domain is all real numbers. And then, of course, our range is limited because it is a parabola. Our range is all of the negative numbers um, up to 0. So we range from negative infinity to 0. 0 is the biggest number that our y's can be. So notice this notation. We have open parentheses to show that we can have all the negative numbers, okay? Negative numbers and then comma, zero is our right-hand limitation, the furthest it can go. And it can include zero, so instead of using a parentheses, we're gonna use a bracket. So that, um, as you can recall, is called interval notation, interval notation. So let's graph f of x equals 2 times x to the third and give the domain and range. Um, so we'll solve for our roots first. So we set it equal to 0. 0 equals 2x cubed. And then when we solve for, z for x, we find that x is equal to 0, and that's the only root. 
Well, we know we had to have three roots, which means that x equals zero is a multiplicity of three. So you might have noticed a pattern here, and it's a very valid pattern that on power functions, your root will always be x equals zero, and you're always gonna have a multiplicity of the degree of your power function. Um, so that will help you find all future roots and all future multiplicities on your power functions. So domain and range, um, it is an odd function, which means that it's going to have um, point symmetry, and it's going to have point symmetry at the origin. Um, all power functions that are odd will have point symmetry at the origin. So that's um, another key characteristic for us to know, so that way we can look at that without actually having to graph it. So 2x cubed, um, start. we know we have the origin there, and so we'll plot a couple other points and sketch it. Our domain is all real numbers, and since it is an odd function, um, and it has point symmetry and it's a power function, that means that our range will also be all real numbers. So remember, the range is only, only limited when you have a parabola in your power function. All right, so let's discuss a little bit more about even and odd functions. Um, we kind of have an idea an even is an even degree, an odd is an odd degree, um, and that works most of the time. However, it's also good to know the algebraic definition of even and odd functions because sometimes our idea of, well, if it's an even degree, that means it's an even function. Not necessarily. There is a test for an even function. In fact, the test is the definition of an even function. So the definition of an even function says this. It, in order to it be an even function, your original function, your f of x, has to be the same if you replace x with negative x. So if you can replace x with negative x and you end up with the same thing, then that means you have an even function versus an odd function where it says that if you replace x with negative x and it ends up being the same as if you had multiplied everything by negative 1 or negative f of x, then that means you have an odd function. So power functions have only one term. So they are, if they have an even degree, they're an even function. If they have an odd degree, they're an odd function. So power functions are very black and white. Um, you never really have to use the test. However, not everything is a power function. So you are going to need to know the definition of even and odd, so that way you can test other types of functions. Um, there is a special function called the identity function, and that is y equals x. Um, this is a linear function. It's, um, it goes right across. The, um, the diagonal of the coordinate plane going up to the right. Um, it's a degree of one. It is a power function. And it's also an odd function because um, it's a degree of an invisible one, which is one is odd, so it does make it an odd function. So again, special function, identity function, y equals x. So let's practice using our definitions to find if the following functions are even, odd, or neither. So we have a function f of x equals x cubed. So we know in our head that it has to be odd, but we're going to go ahead and apply our definition and test it. So remember the definition says that we have to be able to replace x with negative x, and it needs to be the same as if we multiplied the entire thing by negative 1, um, or multiplied the entire thing by negative 1. So if we replace negative x with negative x, that means we have negative x cubed. Notice the use of parentheses. Well, negative x cubed is the same as saying negative x times negative x times negative x which ends up being negative x cubed, which is the same as if we had just multiplied this function's x cubed by negative 1. So since that's true, we would say, well, negative f of x, or just multiplying our original function by negative 1, is the same as replacing 
um, the x with negative x, and we end up with the same thing. So therefore, we have an odd function. So again, since replacing x with negative x was the same as multiplying the entire function by negative 1, the function is odd. Okay, so let's do something that is not a power function. This one is actually a polynomial. It's x to the fourth plus x squared. So we can't just say, oh, this is going to be even because we've got an even degree. It's not a power function. It's a polynomial. So we actually have to use our definition of evens and odds. So let's go ahead and test it. Um, let, if we replace x with negative x, um, that means that, notice the use of parentheses, so negative x to the fourth and negative x squared. Well, negative x to the fourth is negative x times negative x times negative x times negative x. You've got an even number of negatives, which means you have positive x to the fourth. Um, same thing with negative x squared, that ends up just being x squared. Well, x to the fourth plus x squared, that was our original function. So if you replace x, with negative x, and you end up with the same function, that means it's even. And you're like, well, could it be odd too? Well, it can't, and I'll show you why. In order for it to be odd, you have to replace the entire, you have to multiply the entire function, the entire g of x, by negative 1. So you have to multiply x to the fourth plus x squared by negative 1. So you're distributing that negative 1. So negative times x fourth is negative x to the fourth. Negative times x squared is negative x squared, which is not what we ended up with when we replaced our x's with negative x. So therefore, it can't be even and odd. It can only be even. g of x, our original function, ended up being the same as if we replaced x with negative x. So that means our function is even. Let's try another one, x squared plus 2x plus 1. So we'll start with replacing x with negative x. Notice our use of parentheses. So negative x squared is x squared. 2 times negative x is negative 2x. And then we still have our plus 5. So we have to look at what we ended up with. x squared minus 2x plus 5. Is that our same h of x? No, it's not. So it's not even. Perhaps it's odd. Let's, let's go ahead and multiply our entire function by negative 1 and see if our function is odd. So we multiply our entire h of x by negative 1. So negative times x squared is negative x squared. Negative times 2x is negative 2x. And then negative times 5 is negative 5. Well, we see that our original function, h of x, is not equal to the same as if we replaced x with negative x. And it's also not equal to if we multiplied the entire thing by negative 1. So therefore, the function is not even and it's not odd. It's neither. It's neither even nor odd. All right, let's do some more practice. 4 times x to the fifth plus 2x cubed minus x. So again, start with replacing everything with negative x. Um, so x replaced with negative x to the fifth ends up being negative 4x to the fifth. Um, 2x cubed, if I replace the x with negative x, I end up with negative x cubed. So that, com that negative comes in the front, so I get minus 2x cubed. Um, and then I have minus, and remember I'm placing this with negative x, so minus negative x ends, ends up being plus x. So I end up with this when I replace x with negative x. So is this result, is this the same as f of x? No, which means it's not even. However, is it the same as if I had multiplied everything by negative 1? Well, yes. It is. If I had multiplied everything by negative 1, then negative times 4x to the fifth is negative 4x to the fifth. 2x cubed times negative 1 is negative 2x cubed. And then minus 1 times negative is, becomes positive x. So therefore, my replacing x with negative x is the same as multiplying every term by negative 1, which means that it is an odd function. 
Let's try this one, 3x to the fourth minus 5x squared. So we replace everything with negative x, and we see that we end up with the same thing as our original function. So since our original function is the same as if we replaced x with negative x, we can say that our function is even. So you might have noticed in the previous practice problem that all of our terms had an odd degree. And in this problem, all of our terms had an even degree. And that is something that if you notice and you're like, is that true for everything? Why, yes it is. If you have a polynomial where every single degree is odd, then you have an odd degree polynomial. Uh, or you, I'm sorry, you have an odd function. If you have a polynomial where every single term is even, then you have an even um, a function. So this only works if you have all the terms um, have a degree. So if you don't have a degree, it's not going to work. Um, if you don't have a degree on, on every single term, that rule doesn't work. Um, it also doesn't work if um, you have different degrees, like one's even and one's odd. Um, it's not going to work that way either. So it's just kind of a trick if you can remember it. Um, if not, go ahead and keep applying the definitions. Let's try this one. x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 1. So I replace everything with negative x, and I end up with this result. So is this the same as my original function? It is not, which means it's not even. Is it the same as if I had multiplied my original function by negative 1? It is not. So that means um, that I have something that is not even and it's not odd. So it's my original function is not the same as if I replaced it with negative x. And it's also not the same as if I multiplied everything by negative 1. So therefore, it's not even and it's not odd. And I ha if I remembered my trick, I would have known that because um, I can see that I have an odd degree, an even degree, and then another odd degree. So none of my degrees match, which means that there's not either, it's neither even nor odd. All right, go ahead and try some problems on your own.